When you're making a web map, you will often have a base layer. You'll have something in the background that gives context to the data that you're overlaying on your map and makes it possible for a user to look at your map and make sense of it. And the nice thing about base maps is that they're usually pre-made for you and you don't have to uh, put a lot of effort into some base maps to get them working so that you can get on with your work of overlaying the data that you're interested in and making that data tell a story. So for example, this is one of the glitch projects that we've been working through. Uh, this is a leaflet map that overlays some Cardo data on top. And most of what you see on the screen right now is coming from a base layer. These are just um, images that are stitched together to make the appearance of one big map. As you see when I'm scrolling, or panning rather, you see that it's gray momentarily and it loads rather quickly considering. Um, when you see something like that, you know that tiles are being loaded. Um, so these are these tiles are images that represent the map, and um, you your browser does not load all of the images for every spot in the world for every zoom level. Uh, thinking about how far in you can zoom, just the level of detail that would be required to download all of that at once is immense and it doesn't make sense for most uses to have that much data coming down to your computer. So what um, a lot of web maps do is they use um, these image tiles which are chopped up. These are little squares of the world um, and your browser loads those squares as it needs to. As you're moving around the map it will load them. So when we've worked with code before with JavaScript in Leaflet, which is a really common way to make web maps. Um, you see the base layer in the JavaScript file, and the base layer is typically a tile layer. Uh, it's called a tile layer. As I alluded to earlier, it's made up of tiles. So um, these tiles are individual images that are loaded from a server somewhere. This URL, this string that we give to the tile layer, um, isn't a functioning URL on its own. It's a little confusing in that way. If I open a new browser tab and try to open that URL, it doesn't work. And that is mostly because of these curly braces. Um, those aren't uh, those aren't really valid where they are. They're a placeholder for some other things. And um, the easiest way to see this is actually usually to open up developer tools and look at the network tab. I'm in Firefox, but if you were in Chrome, you should see something really similar. And what I'm going to do is go over to the images section of the network tab. And when I, I did not do that. Okay, now I'm on the images tab. When it needs to load more tiles, you will see a bunch of images loaded here. And um, you can actually go through each one and look at them. Um, and a lot of these are actually my Cardo uh, data, which is mostly transparent because it's only in such a small part of the world. Um, but the other ones are the base map tiles. And you can actually see this looks like, where is this? Um, oh, it's, it's this part of the Mediterranean. Um, so, uh, each one of these is actually just an image that lives on the internet. If I um, if I copy the URL and open that in a new tab, there's the image. And each of these images is 
Uh, you could just think of it as being on a folder in a server somewhere, um, the same way that you might host images on a server somewhere. These these um, these tile images are stored there also. So uh, when you look at the URL here, I'm going to pull this over into my glitch project so you can compare those. If I um, line them up a little bit, you'll see that the, it's mostly the same. Uh, the difference here is this A, um, it was curly braces S. This, this gives Leaflet some options as to which server to pull the tile from. That's not our biggest concern. Our biggest concern is actually this ZXY, which stands for Zoom, X, and Y. So that last one, the Y, is usually what you will see as the file name because it's 10.png. It's a little hacky in a way, but um, that is, that's how that works. So um, if you think of the X, this is the column, this is the row. And then this is the zoom level, number five. And um, so if I zoom out a bit, you'll see for different zoom levels that we're getting data. Oh, and you can actually see some of my Cardo data coming through here. Um, there. So for example, you can see Australia there. Great. So that's what a tile is. And um, for the most part so far, if you've been making web maps along with me, you've been using base maps that you have found somewhere else on the internet. Uh, one place I like to go um, just to show that these tiles are out there and that they are, for the most part, interchangeable, um, is openwhatevermap.xyz. And you can click on each of these and actually see what the template URL is that you would use in Leaflet or in um, another GIS. Um, and as you zoom in, you can see it needed to load more tiles, and it loaded uh, just some random tiles from some random uh, tile sets that are out there. Uh, this one's kind of a classic one, Spinal Map. Uh, it's the metal one. And that is, um, for, for our purposes, that's kind of all we need to know about uh, what a base map is. If you want to make your own base map, there are lots of ways of doing that, um, but if you really need a global base map um, and you don't necessarily have a lot of time to put into that, time and expertise to put into that, uh, what I'll usually recommend is going over to Mapbox.